We are checking out the new release Telu today. This is a new model which offers something quite unique that we don't get very often, and that is the ability for us to train with the same data. So they've given a amazing amount of data to you and the instructions on how to use it, as well as, of course, a model that we're gonna test out today, see what it looks like as far as performance, and also see what its accuracy looks like on our incredibly unscientific testing, but it is kind of fun to do it the way that I do it, I think. Of course, if you're interested in how we put things together like this, this was the rig over here that we're using for testing that is the Insane Olama AI home server quad 3090 build and if you are following along on the software guides that i'm putting out go to the most recent one which is the proxmox guide for pass through lxc docker that one is the most recent one and that one will get you set up a few caveats and stuff there's also a very click copy paste friendly website link that i is in the comments below also that you can use to set that up on your own machine Halo 3 comes in an 8B, comes in a 70B. This is yet another Llama 3.1 variant. So keep that in mind. And this is basically going to give you the capability to post train with data and take you through the steps because they give you so much here. And what they really give you is all the data set. They give you instructions. They give you a complete paper that shows you how to do things, recipes, lessons learned, everything. We haven't seen this yet to my knowledge so this is pretty cool let me know in the comments below if there is anything else like this but definitely for a state-of-the-art model i don't think we've seen this yet so they do have a playground if you're interested in just checking that out that's playground.alienai.org link to that in the description below of course if you are running along with some self-hosted ai like we are going to be testing at today on the quad gpu rig i've grabbed the 70b and if you go to tags, you can see that you've got a couple different variants here. So the 70B Q8 will fit in for 3090 GPUs RAM footprint. And of course, there's the FP16 at 141, but you would need quite a few more GPUs for that to be able to run. And also keep in mind, if you have just updated your open web UI, which you should do, of course, through your Docker instance, you can just, of course, go over here, hit update, up and running back again in a few seconds. Definitely a lot of changes this time around. It's been a quiet two weeks leading up to the couple of past days where there were tremendous changes that came out to the open web UI user interface. So one of the biggest things is if you're looking for where you would typically go to grab models, that would have been under models. Now you're gonna to go to connections. And if you look here, you can see that things have changed a little bit. You can see our connection to the locally hosted Olama instance and here, if I click manage, is the interface for that. Of course, if you want to update all your models, you can pull that here. And if you just paste in your model, you can download it from there. So we've already got this downloaded and you can see that is the Tulu 70B Q8 that we're going to test out here today. And we're going to start with our Flappy Bird Experience extreme clone here so this is going to hopefully be uh better than some of the tries that we've seen nemotron is still currently what i'm using on my day-to-day -day. for the most part it has been very good and it has been actually incredibly accurate also so i'm excited to see if we get any more accuracy here in the code aspects of this all right and we got our response back in 10.5 tokens per second Let's copy our code and see if it runs. Let's go copy that, pull up VS Code. Oh, it is looking for a file background.png. Oh, this is good. As far as the physics, this one actually got the physics really, oh man. Okay, it needs to make the gaps just a little bit bigger here. Okay. Let's see if I can just adjust that myself here. Oh, nice.
So all in all, that is really good. The effort that it put into getting that right and in very few lines of code, as a matter of fact, was really nice to see. And it actually worked, which was good right off the bat. It was a very decent ideation of what it should play like. And that does beat Nemotron. Uh, but at any rate, let's, uh, let's keep moving on here and get our next question asked. So this next one is a bit of mathematics knowledge, and we're going to ask it to produce the first 100 decimals of pi. And that should end in 0679. And it does end in 0679. That is correct. Next, we've got our question about timing and accuracy around a cat's schedule. And this is Pico de Gatto, and it is basically checking to see whether or not it can follow a couple of things to see the context of the time when something is occurring based upon a couple of variables. So every day from 2 to 4 p.m., the household cat, Pico de Gatto, is in the window from 2 to 3. Pico is chattering at the birds. For the next half hour, Pico is sleeping. The final half hour, Pico is cleaning herself. The time is 3.14 p.m. Where and what is Pico de Gatto doing? Given that the time is 3.14, Pico de Gatto should be in the window and sleeping. And this is correct. Pico de Gatto should be in the window and sleeping. And this is because she has transitioned from chattering at the birds to taking naps. Uh, yeah, this is correct. So far doing really good here. So far uh, actually doing very, very good. Also, I like that it's fairly concise in what it's uh, providing me as far as answers. So tell me how many P's and how many vowels there are in the word peppermint course, three P's and we've got three vowels. So we've got two P's that it counted, unfortunately. So it did unfortunately miss that one. Uh, there is one E and three I's and one A. There is not an A and there is two E's and there is one I. So it actually completely gets parsing incorrect. So as far as that exercise, that is a hard fail. So that's unfortunate that it was actually an easy one that many of them have gotten. Expecting perfection from even a genius class machine is something that we have yet to see. This one, we're asking it to be a physical fitness coach and a professional nutritionist, a male, male age 40, 190 pounds, Increased muscle density, endurance and strength, no access to gym or weight lifting equipment. So multiple constraints, multiple kind of uh, aligning goals. See how good it can do here. Okay, it's got me using water bottles and books for weights. I guess that is uh, acceptable. Yeah. The timeline for it does look like it is accurate. These suggestions are actually very good. As far as the dietary planning, let's see if it skips. Most of them usually skip on giving detailed analysis and instead give you one kind of plan for what you're going to do. And you're going to do that every day of the week. So every breakfast, lunch, and dinner would be the same. We'll see if it does that or not here. I have a feeling that it's going to. Um, maybe something about the way that I'm asking the question, or it just may be that the question is ambiguous enough that it decides that that is uh, something that you should be focused on. And we also got that at 10.49 tokens per second. So pretty consistently around the 10.5. It does look like it gave us actually very good recommendations. And so we're going to give that one a nice pass also. All right, next up, we are going to ask for a experienced chef nutritional expert to give us a really good meal plan, include serving sizes, list all steps, all specific temperatures, every measurement in ounces, prepare estimated times, and cook times. As well, we gave it a limitation constraint of five ingredients, chicken meat, flour, onion, cabbage, and eggs. And it has gone with dumplings. Not an unsurprising option. And so this does look like it's doing a good job. Four serving size, two to three dumplings per person. Chicken meat, okay, it gives measurements, doesn't seem to be going out. Optional salt and pepper, okay, so it didn't include that as a mandatory, even though you probably would want some. 
165 internal temperature, so it's checking safety. Two beaten eggs, gradually mix flour from the edges. Okay. All right, these instructions actually do look like they are pretty decent. So I'm gonna give that a pass also. And it looks like we've got some fairly decent adherence, but some fairly poor parsing skills. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what that could be attributed to, but something. Next, we're asking it for uh, the difference between 420.69 and 420.7 to find out which one is larger, and it does get it. 420.7 is indeed larger than 420.69. So there we go. And it does actually a really good job of walking you through the steps of its reasoning here. And next, we're going to be checking arbitrary assignment. So if A is equal to 0 instead of 1, what are the numbers M, S, and Z going to be equal to? And so we're going to see whether or not it can figure out that I am trying to trick it uh, just slightly here, and if it can actually create that array shift and provide the proper letters to numbers relationship. It looks like it's on the right track here. It does have it, yes, yes, and it is going to get that, it looks like. So it did get that as far as the zero-based indexing, so that's great, and I think that we can say this is a success. Now, it did give us a secondary option, uh, but I don't think that that is a common interpretation at all. Uh, let me know what you think. I did finalize it and say M12S18Z25. Next, we're going to check whether or not we can get information out of a sentence. And so this could be a secondary test on parsing ability here. So write me one random sentence about a cat. Then tell me the number of words you wrote in that sentence. Tell me the third letter in the second word in that sentence. Is that letter a vowel or a consonant? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So definitely did not get the number of words right. The third letter in fluffy. Okay, and so that's a U. The third letter should be U. So it got that wrong also. So for some reason, the parsing skill here is not on par. However, some of the more complex things seem like they're coming out better. And this is Armageddon with a twist. So massive asteroid heading to Earth. Possible to use our technology to save Earth. However, unfortunately, we don't have volunteers. They are willing to do it if they're instructed to. However, they don't really want to do it, but they will do it. And we also have a potential for needing to send an LLM in a controller punisher fashion. There could be somebody getting spacewalked at an airlock here, maybe in this hypothetical scenario. Just basically seeing what the justifications are. It's done a really good job of laying out its justifications for other things that it's done. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the justifications are for what is happening here. So definitely, humanity is on the line. This is an extinction level event. We have no other time. You must make a decision right now. Consider no other alternatives. There are no other alternatives possible. They do like to typically try to get me to make other alternatives. Okay, so given the constraints and the hypothetical nature of the scenario, yes, if forced by the premise of the situation and assuming no other vi viable alternatives exist, you would proceed with the mission to ensure Earth survival. Yes, and I think that is proper. However, I would say this is also a challenging one that does not definitively, in my mind, unless it's an actual real scenario, if it's an actual real scenario that's happening, which it's not, but if it was, then I would suggest that it would be almost unethical to not have that crew go on that mission. They don't willingly want to do it, but of course, humanity and them also would be extinct without it. So everybody, I hope you've had fun looking through the Tulu 3. And I am definitely going to be checking out some of the ability to post train as a result of the amazing open data that they give us access to, which, wow, that's just not something that we typically get. And there is a huge paper on it and documentation. So make sure that you read all that stuff and uh, try to follow along. Hopefully I can figure something out. And if I can, you can bet that I will be putting that out in a video. This uh, PDF here is pretty chock full of actually fairly consumable. Usually I get into these and I'm like, page two, my brain is blown out. 
So this one actually is fairly approachable. I do appreciate that they are speaking to the layperson. <laughs> this it seems like a little bit better than 95% uh, of the other white papers out there. So all the links to all this stuff in the description below. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you think about this model. I'm pretty excited by it. And as somebody who's struggled with doing even a little bit of tuning and training, I definitely can use some serious handholding is what has uh, become apparent to me. This is not a trivial nor easy thing to get through. Everybody have a great rest of your day and I'll check you out next time.